Hi guys, it's Nick, and today's video is going to be an educational type video, so that's why I have all of this space over here. There's going to be lots of diagrams, pictures, examples, and whatnot, so I'd rather not take up valuable real estate. It's free real estate. So that I can insert those and they can be large and clear and viewable for you. Anyways, I'm going to be explaining the mechanism of variegation within the Monstera Thai constellation versus the Monstera Albo Borgesiana. So basically how the variegation develops within the plant and where it comes from. And I'm going to tie this into how it affects you and how you care for the plant and what this means when you're buying the plant. So without further ado, let's get explaining. Before we get into the nitty gritty of what I just said I was going to be explaining, Explaining. I'm going to talk to you about what variegation is and what the actual definition is so that will help us better understand what I'm talking about in this video. So variegation is not portions of a plant lacking chlorophyll. By definition, it is the appearance of differently colored zones in the leaves and sometimes stems of a plant. So sometimes it doesn't have anything to do with chlorophyll whatsoever. An example of this, of a plant that's variegated without lacking chlorophyll is this syndapsis. And I'm going to show you this up close. Now these splotches actually come from areas under the leaf surface that have trapped air bubbles. So it's really nothing to do with lack of chlorophyll or pigment or really anything at all, it's just air. So today we're going to be talking about a chlorophyllous variegation, meaning variegation caused by parts of a leaf lacking chlorophyll. So the two modes or pathways of variegation we're going to be talking about today is chimeric variegation and genetic variegation. So first we're going to talk about chimeric variegation and I'll explain to you what a chimera is. And that's the type of variegation that exists within the Monstera Albo Borgesiana. So what creates chimeric variegation? So I found an article from the University of Florida and it explained that a chimera is formed when two different types of cells that have different genotypes or genetic makeups exist within a meristem of a plant. So essentially within the growth point, there is white cells and green cells. However, they are growing in conjunction to make a leaf. Now there are three different types of chimeric variegations. There are three different ways that a chimera can happen and they give you different looking variegation depending on which one it is. And I have examples for all three. So I thought I'd talk about all those even though only one of them applies to the Monstera Albo Borgesiana. So here is our first type of chimeric variegation, Ficus triangularis variegata. So I'm going to move this over here and give you a diagram. So there are different layers of cells in a meristem layered on top of each other, kind of like a bean dip. Anyways, in this type of chimeric variegation, there is one layer of cells over the meristem or the growth shoot that are lacking chlorophyll. And this is the most stable chimeric variegation, which means it is the least likely to revert back to green or to create leaves that are entirely a chlorophyllous or lacking chlorophyll. So how can you identify paraclinal chimeric variegation? As you can see with all of these leaves, the variegation is wrapped around the entirety of the leaf and it's very consistent. A lot of these leaves look very similar even though they aren't exactly the same and this can also be reversed. So here is a Hoya Crimson Princess and this is the reverse of the Ficus Triangularis Variegata where the white is on the inside but the green is wrapped around. So the article didn't state this or show any examples of this but what I am guessing is that the white cells or the achlorophyllous cells are on the bottom or deeper down in the meristem and the green cells are covering the top which gives you a reverse of what the Ficus triangularis variegata looks like. So I'll give you a close-up of both of them so you can, you know, look at them better. And this one actually has a couple reverted leaves, which I'll also show you. So here is a reverted leaf. Even though this is the most stable, there's still chances of reversion. However, it did kind of revert back down here. And sometimes the variegation will come back because there's still tissues in the stem that are the achlorophyllous type, but it just doesn't show up in the leaves all the time just because it's kind of a hit or miss. So here are the regular paraclinally chimerically 
variegated leaves right here, how it should be. Green wrapped around the edge, white in the center, or you can reverse that too. Here is the reverse. You got white around the edges and green inside. That's about it. So the second type of variegation is mariclinal variegation, and this is where only part of the surface of the meristem is covered by abnormally colored cells of a different genotype. And this is the most unstable, and I'm going to show you an example of this too. So here is a beautiful lush lemon lime philodendron heteraceum. I interrupted its sun bath. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. This is for education. But I will show you a couple leaves where we have some variegation. And you may be thinking like this isn't variegated, like the leaves are all one color. However, there are some spots of variegation. Here is one of them. You can see some dark green on there. Here is another one. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. It's just like a little speck on the leaf. Here's a really cool one. There's a line all the way down the center. I wish this would stay, but since it is periclinal chimeric variegation, it's not going to. The new growth on the same stem does not have this. This type of chimeric variegation is very unstable. And there's another one just for kicks. There's a lot of these actually, but they're all very unstable and you can't really predict where they're going to come and when they're going to leave. Okay, so now I'm done with the thumbnail. Lastly, we're going to talk about sectorial chimeric variegation. So this is where the achlorophilus or differently colored cells, if it's something other than achlorophilus, extend down beyond the surface of the meristem, deeper into the cell layers. And it just exists in a chunk of the meristem. It doesn't cover an entire layer. It's just kind of a section, which is why it's called sectorial. So unfortunately, I do not have a Monstera Albo Borghesiana because I'm still trying to find a match on seeking arrangements. So I'm going to get you a different plant that features this type of chimeric variegation. And I'd like to show you the example. So we're gonna get rid of this rainforest. And here we have the talk of the town, Philodendron Pink Princess. So the characteristic of this variegation is chunky portions of color on the leaf. It's not really, you know, along the edges or inside of the leaf or evenly splashed all over the leaf. And this is the type of variegation you find with half moon leaves. So if you have a plant that puts out half moon leaves, you probably have sectorial chimeric variegation at play. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Here's an older leaf, but it's a good example because only half of the leaf has variegation. Here's another one. There's not really any rhyme or reason to why the variegation's here. It's just there. It's just chilling there because it has sectorial chimeric variegation. Same with this. It's just kind of wherever. You can't really forecast where it's going to be. And on this one, there's nothing on the front. There's a little bit on the front, but it's on the back. Why did it decide to go on the back? I don't know, because it's sectorial chimeric variegation. It does whatever it wants. So you have to keep an eye on it and make sure that the leaves aren't getting too pink or too white or too whatever. And sometimes you're going to have to cut portions of the plant off to maintain that variegation. And that's what I thought was going on with this until I discovered the variegation was on the back of the leaf. And the new leaf on here actually has some variegation on the front of the leaf. I only had to pay $130 to, you know, get that. So thank you for not being a passive aggressive diva and putting your variegation on the back of your leaf. If you're thinking about getting a philodendron pink princess, it's probably not worth it. But yeah, go ahead anyways, try. You know, maybe it'll change your life. It didn't change my life. Maybe I should have used that money to go on an ayahuasca retreat. But now I'll never conquer my demons and set my spirit free to Mother Aya because I decided to use that money to buy a philodendron. So going back to the Monstera Albo Borghesiana, if you purchase one, if you purchase a node, make sure there are some white stripes through it to show you that there is variegation. If you're buying a growth with a leaf on it, do not buy one that's almost completely white because it will die because plants need chlorophyll to produce sugars to feed itself to survive. Conversely, if it's all green, it's probably going to continue to be all green. Now you don't really know 100% what the next leaf will look like. However, you want to buy one that kind of has the same variegation that you desire because that's what will most likely be put out in the next leaf. 
Okay, so on to genetic variegation, and that is the type of variegation that exists within the Monstera Thai constellation. So there are many different types of genetic variegation. They're all pretty different, and I don't have any fun examples of them, so I'm just going to stick with the one type that applies to the Monstera Thai constellation. So the variegation in Monstera Thai constellation comes from things within the cell's genetic material called transposons. So these are just pieces of genetic material from a DNA strand that get cut out from the DNA strand and get inserted into another section of a different DNA strand, or they get copied and then reinserted into another portion of the DNA strand. Essentially, with words, it's just like cut and paste or copy and paste. So this is entirely random, which means the variegation is entirely random. Generally, with this type of variegation, you'll get a splash appearance where you'll get little tiny sections of variegation throughout the leaf, as opposed to an entire leaf or half of a leaf or a huge chunk. Occasionally this can still happen though. As far as reversion, there is no reversion unless all of the cells randomly mutate at once and you get an entirely different plant and then you should buy a lottery ticket. So if you buy a plant that is genetically variegated like the Monstera Thai constellation, you don't really have to worry about cutting the plant and maintaining the variegation to the level that you want or buying a plant and getting one that's really weak and is gonna die or one that's just gonna return to its natural form. So all in all, when you're looking at the Thai constellation, the variegation is within all the cells. And when you're looking at an Elboborgesiana, you've got two types of cells existing in the plant and they can outcompete each other. So with the Albo Borgesiana, it's essentially trying to mediate a fight between variegated or non-variegated cells. If you put an Albo Borgesiana in the wild, eventually you'd get an all-white plant that would kill itself, or you would get an all-green plant that would return to its natural form and kind of thrive and flourish that way. So you really do have to keep your eye on it. That's all for today. Thank you so much. I hope I didn't get too sciencey with you and bore you to death. Definitely let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about variegation more and different kinds of variegation. Subscribe and stick around if you want to see that. Like the video if you like the video. That's about it. Thank you so much. Can we just think about this? I got all this beautiful lush foliage for pretty much after tax and shipping, a third of the price of this pathetic pink princess. I cannot imagine. <laughs> oh my god, I made like 50 faces. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this type of, so this type of, so this type of, stop.